Tonight on Let It Rip, are you ready to go all electric? More than 80 billion bucks is being invested to make electric vehicles and batteries in the U.S., but many say not so fast. It's one of the topics our panel of auto experts takes on in this auto show edition of Let It Rip. But first, did the governor do enough to keep auto jobs in Michigan? Some say more needed to be done. What does our panel think? Let It Rip starts now. Joining us now on Let It Rip, Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence, auto expert Glenn Stevens with Mish Auto, Rocky Ruchkowski, Oakland County Chair of the GOP, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, and our attorney anchor Charlie Langton. Let's get right to it. I just got back uh, this week from the North American International Auto Show. And if you, unless you've been living under a rock, you don't know that all the companies want you to know that electric is here to stay. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment. But first, what about Michigan jobs? Are we doing enough in the state of Michigan to maintain manufacturing jobs and the manufacturing culture here? Let's begin with Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence and talk a little bit about what her thoughts are on that. Uh, Congresswoman, you know, there's kind of a high, a buzz right now with the auto show in town. Uh, Is this just smoke and mirrors? Are we heading in the right direction? I had the good fortune of being at the auto show with the president. And one of the things that he was so hyped about, and I can tell you it's contagious, is the amount of investment and production of these electric vehicles. And guess what? They're being made in the United States. And that's what he is so focused on and has passed and signed bills so that we can have jobs for American workers. UAW was there and big time to represent and to say thank you to the president. In addition to that, when I talk to the CEOs, and the presidents of these companies and vice presidents, they're all keeping to their commitment of total manufacturing by 2030 and hoping to have a total electric fleet by 2050. Okay, these are some lofty goals that the Congresswoman just brought up. The president has said again, for those who uh, aren't paying attention, that by 20. 30, he wants 50% of all the vehicles made in the United States to be electric. We're going to get in that electric topic in the next segment here. But Rocky, I want to ask you, you know, as the chair of the, the GOP in Oakland County, your thoughts when you see Governor Whitmer talk about the success stories uh, that have happened in the state of Michigan because of manufacturing jobs that have stayed here and those that are coming. Listen, we applaud when the legislature works with the governor for success stories. But we also realized that Ford Motor Company built their plant in Memphis and didn't stay in Michigan. We're losing a lot of jobs, especially uh, the support jobs, the OEM support, the tier one, tier two jobs. For example, you're seeing a lot more less uh, supply chain jobs and a lot less of those manufacturers and, and those representatives, product representatives that represented those parts that went to combustion engines. And now we're all pushing to EVs. Are we even prepared for it? Is our grid prepared for it? And are we pushing Uh, electric production in the state of Michigan. And I think the governor has actually lagged by wanting to close line five and other uh, electric producing opportunities for us. All right. We're going to see, by the way, you've you've probably peaked at Mike Darrow from True Car. He's going to be joining us in the next segment, talking a little bit about the electrification. But I want to get uh, into this with Congresswoman Dingell a little bit. Uh, You helped invite the president here today. By the way, I think uh, he called you uh, commander or something like that. He had a little nickname for you when he was in town this week. He did. He called me the commander. <laughs> hey, I, I'm an equal opportunity. I give you, a, giving everybody a hard time or telling them what I think, or just what can I say? I was happy that the president was here and it was important. And my colleague Brenda and friend Brenda made their point. But I am going to say to you that uh, we've all got to work together and do a better job of making sure that we're going to keep getting those jobs back here. We've been investing in bringing the supply chain back to this country. I think COVID. Uh, showed us all what happens when we outsource and we're dependent on China for things like masks and gowns, let alone the chips, which for how many months had cars sitting in parking lots. But we've got to compete with other states and we do not, did not have the incentives that other states had. Uh, And I think it took losing four to Kentucky and Tennessee for everybody. It isn't one party. It's, you know what people said to me, I talked to 10 companies we lost. They said, 
Michigan, all they do, if we go to other states, they line up. We don't know what party somebody is. They make us feel welcome. They make us feel like they want us to be there. And Michigan has got to do a better job of that. The Quentin, who's the head of MEDC, started here a year ago, was working on that. You saw, I think it took what happened at Ford to wake up everybody. The governor, the legislature, local levels yeah. of government, we're doing it now. We're well, investing and we've got to keep doing it. But is it enough and how much more do we have to do? Glenn Stevens with Mish Auto, you take a close look at this stuff every single day. Uh, you're not only reading the headlines, you're talking to the players. Uh, is enough being done right now to attract and keep these manufacturing jobs in Michigan? Well, everyone, I think that we'll know if we're doing enough a few years down the road. That's when we'll really know. But I do feel confident that everybody's pulling in the right direction. There's a lot of money flowing and funding. There's a lot of organizations working on these different issues. Did we need to readjust and get some things set with incentives and site development? Yes, that has been bipartisan, that is moving forward. Really what's gonna be the difference for us is are we preparing our talent for the future? That's the EV transition, and that's gonna be the growth in the technology part of the industry. That's where Michigan's gonna grow, and that's where that's where real household medium income is gonna to grow too, and that's what really set our, our, our sights on our, at, at Mich Auto. Charlie? Well, I don't know. To me, is, is the Romeo plant, is that open and in Ford? Are they closing that one? What about the GM plant in Lansing? I think that those are two of the plants that have closed. Um, I think we need to bring, build it batteries. I think that if we're going to go making jobs and, and well-paying jobs and jobs that are going to last, I think we have to transfer, at least think about anyway, uh, some battery plants. I, I'm not aware if we have any in Michigan. And so, well, I mean, really, the man, General I'm, Motors battery. Mary wait a minute. General, General Motors, Motors plant is a battery plant. One, one, one. What about the other companies? What about no, Ford, any Ford more, also. though? Charlie That's Ford. where it's at. Charlie, we Charlie got that Ford. plant after Kentucky and Tennessee, and everybody woke up and said, we got to start working together. And that's what we got to keep doing. Charlie I've been I'm part of the There we go. With the Nets. We saw a victory when we realized, hey, that's what we got to do, and we got to keep on doing that. And we're moving in the right direction, as Glenn said. And I'm going to tell you all, I went to the groundbreaking of Hyundai for their safety, R&D, and they said they're here in Michigan because we've got the talent. We've got the skill set. Yeah, Rocky, you know, are they moving what, what fast is, enough? Are they no, moving I don't fast think enough, so. Rocky? I, I don't think so. What really concerns me is the minerals that we need for the batteries. You're talking about graphite, cobalt, nickel, and lithium. These are uh, minerals that we're getting from countries like Afghanistan and China we're still becoming more dependent on those nations than looking for minerals in the United States and looking at opportunities to reinvent how battery and power packs are created for our EVs. By the way, Charlie, one of the things you forgot also is, is the Ford plant, the Ford powertrain plant in Sterling Heights, which is becoming electric as well. And GM's Zero plant, which used to be DHAM, is now D, uh, Detroit Zero plant. Uh, I just think if the question was, can we do more? I think the answer is yes, we can do oh, more. Yeah, we really we want also, to make Michigan a powerhouse. Listen, I don't, I'm not saying we can't. I'm not saying we can't. But I'm just saying I think that we have to at least look in that direction. And I think yeah. that we're, I'd like to see, I would like to see a little bit more. And those well, are good paying jobs. What's really so, concerning is do we have the capability in our grid? You just saw the governor of California, Newsom, basically tell people to turn down their power. Don't don't buy uh, gas cars. We're going to go all electric. But then a week later, he puts out a, a warning to his people, turn down your power, turn down your power use. And if you're powering up your car, please don't do it this week. Uh, are, do we, are we ready for it? Is our grid ready for it? And are our skills and our jobs and the people that will be laid off from working on those combustion engines are they going to be able to to be retrained? Yes. Go, go, ahead. go ahead, Congresswoman Lawrence. Go ahead. Yes, I want to add that it's all hands on deck. We know the investment and in skilled trade training has escalated. I personally, through appropriations, appropriated funds to Wayne County to do a pipeline for mobility careers. I know for a fact that the curriculum at our community colleges are advanced. The unions who used to be friends and family are now committed to growing that skilled workforce. And when you look at the CHIPS bill, we, we saw a problem. Did you say, is it soon enough? But I hold people accountable. Once you know what the problem is, do you try to fix it? And for this, I can applaud the administration and applaud the Democratic sure. Party who voted to invest in money so we can manufacture those chips 
create those jobs here in America. Glenn, I want to give you the last word of this segment as we're going to be uh, wrapping up this particular segment. Your thoughts on getting that talent through the pipeline in the state of Michigan, because regardless of what policy says, we need the people, right? We do. And we have a population issue, as you well know, in this state. And we have an aging workforce. And it's really incumbent upon all of us, as, as Representative Lawrence said, to be all hands on deck. And that means that we have to prepare for the transition that the industry is going to and also the digitalization of all jobs. We need our students, our young people, people we retrain, we reskill, people who come from other places here to be part of an economy that's going to be very different. And for us to compete and to win, we're going to make sure we're going to have to make sure we and I, I, I feel confident that. Under Governor Snyder, a lot of that work was started, and I feel very confident that Governor Whitmer's administration is carrying it forward. So we're doing the right things. Time's going to tell. And time will tell what the voters decide, the people who are watching this program, as to who will lead the state come November. Of course, a big election in this auto show is not without politics with this big visit. And we also have a lot of talk, a lot of buzz about electrification. Coming up next on Letter Rip, are we all ready for electric vehicles? Some are not catching on to that buzz, what the president and CEO of True Car says. And if it takes days to get the power kicking after a thunderstorm, can the infrastructure handle hundreds of thousands of charging stations? We take a look next. Back to Let It Rip, the special edition as we talk about the Detroit Auto Show. All the talk of the town has been about the new electric future, but are we really ready? Joining us now is Mike Darrow, the president and CEO of True Car. We're also joined by our two esteemed lawmakers, of course, Debbie Dingle and Brenda Lawrence, and our own Charlie Langton is joined side by side in boxes still with GOP Oakland County Chair Rocky Rutschkowski. And it's good to see all of you. Thank you so much for joining us again. I want to begin by showing you what the governor said earlier this week about an all electric future. Are people ready? And is it still affordable for people to go electric? Take a listen. I was walking with Mary Barra over at the GM um, display and they've got some products that are like $40,000. Um, you, it's, a, it's a vehicle that has got longer capacity and as we build out you know, charging stations, that range anxiety is going to dissipate. But some of these products are so cool, you lose power at your home, this truck behind me can power it for three days. So we're dealing with the storage issue that has vexed the transition as well. And it, so I think this is an opportunity. If I can get the legislature to agree with me on some of the incentives so that people can, we can bring down the cost of EVs, that'll e make it even more available for more people. All right, there you have it. The governor talking about the affordability of electric cars. Uh, I'll start with you, uh, Michael Darrow. It is always good to talk to you at the auto show every year. Uh, True Car. Your thoughts on the affordability? What is what are the what is the, the average price of an electric car, and, and is it within reach for everybody? Yeah, we, we we certainly think with the initial pricing we've seen that the electric vehicles will be competitive with what's out there. Pricing is pretty difficult right now in the new car segment, even across internal combustion engines. Supplies low, pricing's been rising, used car prices are up. So you know, I I think as these vehicles come to market. There'll need to be some time spent on making sure they fit into the right segments, but there certainly is an opportunity to price these vehicles on market and consumers are looking for them. Our studies show they're ready to buy electric vehicles. They're ready to consider electric vehicles and put them on the shopping list. I got to tell you, I drive a, a hybrid uh, Jeep and I like it because it, uh, you know, I live 24 miles from work here at channel two and by Fox two, and I get to go all electric home, all electric back. But my wife is like, I don't know if I want all electric just yet. And there are people out there like that. Charlie, you've hit the pavement. You've talked to people. Uh, what are your thoughts? You think most people are ready for this? I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. No, I, I listen. I want to see those that thirty thousand dollar Equinox that the governor was talking about. And I think at that point, if that's truly the cost, however, you do have to add the charging station. You do have to live within a certain distance. I think there's still a fear that you can't go long distances, et cetera, et cetera. Again, I'm not saying it can't be changed, but I think the I think the car company is going to have to go on a real good PR campaign and show people that electric cars are affordable. I'd like to, you know, what about the insurance issues with that one? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I think we've got a lot of issues. I, don't, I think it is going to have to go baby steps uh, for people. And it's going to have to be people like, you know, they do these hybrid cars and maybe, maybe they get used to the electric and maybe at some point. I don't think we're ready yet. I think we're getting there though. 
Rocky, I hear a lot of people on both ends of the political spectrum touting either why it's a great idea or why it's a terrible idea. And I can't help but notice, but there are a lot of conservative voices out there saying that this is not necessarily uh, wonderful and great because the energy has to come from somewhere. And when you, you're deriving electric energy to get into your car, you're using electricity to make that happen. And so it's not as though it's, it's completely green. Uh, what are you hearing? Well, there's a concern. There's a concern, number one, about the fact that it isn't completely green. It's it, You're still making energy out of uh, coal burning plants or out of fossil fuels. Uh, we're closing down nuclear plants. We're, we're seeing that wind power and solar power isn't generating enough energy. And remember, we're buying a lot of these solar cells still from China. We're still becoming energy dependent. And as I mentioned in the previous segment, we're still looking at minerals for these batteries that are coming from countries like China or Afghanistan, where, where we're gonna be paying a higher price for these and we're becoming more and more dependent on electric cars because our, our manufacturers are going electric. But one of the other, other interesting things is also about the cost. You've just seen where car makers increased the amount of cost by the amount of the federal subsidy that was just increased. So I'm not sure if we're even gonna be able to afford these vehicles, especially in an inflationary period next year. Congresswoman Lawrence, uh, you, of course, saw the president this week so excited about the electrification, talking about jobs coming in because of it. But when you think about uh, the average person, uh, our brothers and sisters, our neighbors in Metro Detroit who are struggling sometimes to, to, to clean out their fridge after a power outage, by the way, after a week, uh, does it worry you from an infrastructure point of view and a cost point of view that this is just unattainable? For me, it's not unattainable, but I do have some major concerns about our electrical grid. We all have been subjected. I recently had a storm and lost everything in my refrigerator. Um, and to think about that, if you have all, all electric and, the, and a senior citizen asks me this, what if the power goes out? I can't go to work because I can't charge my vehicle. What if the power goes out? And what am I for the buses, if you have all electric buses and they can't charge. So understand technology advancements, um, new industries, they have their growing pains, but I am still excited. I haven't lost hope. I know that we're making those steps that's necessary, but we need to bring our electric uh, providers to the table and get them committed as well to ensuring that we have an electrical grid that can sustain this new investment in volume of electric vehicles. Congresswoman Dingell, I wanna give you a second to talk about this too, because you come from the auto industry and went into uh, politics, but and I'll get to you in just a moment. But Michael, I wanted to ask you uh, on that thought right now about sustainability. Uh, I know that there may be a zeal for people to wanna to go out and get one of these, but what have you found relative to markets across the country being prepared and ready for this type of infrastructure? Well, there, there certainly still are a lot of questions, Rube, around infrastructure and exactly how that will work. And consumers are starting to pay attention to that. The first thing that they watched around electric vehicles was the initial range. And the OEMs addressed that, right? The, the early electrics had a lower range on the batteries. Mm -hmm. They built that range up. They're near 300 miles, most of them right now. So I think what will happen around this space is these great challenges will bring great solutions, right? This We're moving in this direction. It's going to happen, and consumers seem to be lining up behind it. There just are still some questions to answer, and, and some of them are the grid. I live in Southern California. I heard in your earlier segment, you know, the questions about that state trying to move even more quickly to, to uh, all, all EVs. And I get a note in the mail about when I can run my dryer you know, from right. four to nine and things like that. So, you know, there are definitely challenges out there that have to be addressed, but I, I think we're all going to have to rally together and, and come up with solutions. Congresswoman Dingell, when you see people rolling their eyes, when they, they hear about what's happening in California, go buy an electric car, but please don't use your dryer. Um, do you see why some people are frustrated by what seems to be just opposing thoughts in the same push? Look, we got to keep moving forward. There are a lot of misinformation, even as much as I love you all, among you. Back to matter is now electric vehicles can be used to power your house when there is an outage. You sure. can talk about those electric buses, which will charge at night, which is at the low uh, charging time, and be used to sell to sell energy back to the utilities to help solve the utility problems. You are. Mira showed 
uh, when the president was here this week, Mary Barr showed the, pre the president vehicles that are coming down in price. We are building better batteries with longer range. We've got to reduce our dependency on China. It's at 80%. There are groups on part of them that are meeting now that are showing how we're going to. I've got the environmentalists and the unions and many other people are all at the same table talking about how we're going to bring that ability back here. And when you talk about a tax credit, Rocky, the recently passed bill has the tax credits in it did not increase the tax credit. And the reality is because we're going to de decrease our dependence on China, that the, for the first couple of years, no one's going to be eligible for them until those batteries are made in the US. Those tax credits will only go towards those made in America. So Rocky, that's, that's make good, those batteries. Though, Rocky, that's I, a good thing, right, Rocky? Yeah, that's absolutely a great thing. And, and I concur with that. The problem is that a lot of the minerals being used for that still come from China, still come but from that's Afghanistan why we're bring and other here. areas. Well, lithium, I, I, I wish we had a lot of deposits of lithium. But one of the other things that nobody's talking about is the, how do we fund our infrastructure? We fund our infrastructure with gas taxes and other little oh, registrations on our vehicles. Vehicle miles traveled. It, yeah, we are so talking now, about it. Stop well, saying we're not yeah, talking hold, about it. Hold on one second, because the, the issue is, is it's easy to get money for infrastructure when you're tanking up your gas every week or every two weeks, and it's piece by piece by piece. Your registration of your car is about $200, mile, $200 $300 on the average in the state of Michigan. Now with these EVs, how are we going to collect it? So you're going to collect it by estimated miles and you're going to be paying in lump sum, somebody's going to bring you a check for $4,000 a year or $3,000 a year to pay for the infrastructure, these things need to be answered before Mike Darrow, we just jump off a cliff. Mike, Mike, I saw you wave your head up and down when Rocky was talking. You agree that there are there is some truth to that. Yeah, and, and, and there there's a lot of challenges out there, but, but oh. these things I truly believe will be solved. I mean, you know, that's, that's the awesome. way this is moving. Yes. And, and what I can tell you, folks, and, and these distinguished guests have a lot more input on infrastructure than I know, consumers will be ready. When these things are figured out, these cars are quiet, they ride well, they're responsive, they are good vehicles. Consumers will make the switch when we're ready to, to move them in that direction. Yeah, Michael, but Mike, you forgot I one tell you. point. Right. They're less expensive to operate. Mike, yeah. I Carly Langton, I'll have you know Price. for a test drive at the auto show this week, if you try to get behind a Blazer, a Chevy Blazer electric, zero to 60 in four seconds. The torque in the pickup in these electric vehicles now, is outstanding. Now, nice. now, now we're talking. Now, now we're talking. I, I agree, gentlemen, but think about that in a northern state that has ice and snow about four months out of the year. It gets a little bit concerning, and we need to start looking four-wheel drive uh, electrics as well. Well, they, are, see, they are coming. They, they they are are coming. coming. Yeah. I know. I'm looking coming out one. there. Rocky, the Jeep. The Jeep Congresswoman, all your, yeah, the Jeep, the Jeep 4XE and the Cherokee 4XE both also have all-wheel drive, which is good yes. for anyone in the snow. But you know what? We're going to come back and give our entire panel to give us their final thoughts. We'll be right back. Final thoughts on the future of the auto industry. We go to Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence. The future of the auto industry is electric vehicle. Get on board. We are making some amazing vehicles in Detroit. Michael Darrow. Rube, first of all, thanks for having me. And I'm, I'm very encouraged now that all these infrastructure issues with the passion behind this will be resolved. And what I would say is consumers will be ready. They love these vehicles when they drive them and they'll be ready to make the transition from the internal combustion engines to the electrics. All of our data tells us that. Congresswoman Dingle. Michigan's at the forefront of innovation and technology globally, and we're going to stay there. We put the world on wheels, and now we're introducing them to the electric vehicles. And people are feeling the buzz, but are they going to buy it? Let's get to Rocky. Absolutely. I'm pretty excited about it. But, uh, you know, we've got to make sure that our education and our future our children are prepared to lead in manufacturing and in innovation. And uh, I'm excited to one day drive one of them. Charlie Langton cost it's money if you can make an electric car right now for about 20 grand 25,000 you'd sell them all every single one of them but i don't see that yet but it's it's coming and if you get a chance my friends to head over to the detroit auto show you have to check out all of the, what's going on with the big three right now from stellantis to ford and the lightning that pickup is just beautiful and at general motors mm -hmm. you talk about an affordable uh, you know, vehicle, you're talking about the Equinox right now, just under 30,000, the Blazer and also the Silverado. Some exciting times in our city. And the best part about it in the city of Detroit, we know our 
neighbors or brothers or sisters or family members are the ones who had their hands in the success of these great cars. That does it for this edition of Let It Rip.